Welcome everyone. Phyllis Green, it is a real pleasure to do this interview with you. Our task today is to try to give the viewers of the exhibition Prairie Interlace, Weaving Modernism in the Expanded Frame, a glimpse of your very successful and prolific long career through four selected works integrating gender politics and craft. You are an acclaimed mixed media sculptor with a deep knowledge of textile and ceramic primarily an object maker who represents the body. You grew up in Winnipeg, where you attended the University of Manitoba and earned a bachelor degree in 1971. In 1978, you moved to California, where you remained to this day, acquiring an MFA in uh, 1981 from the University of California, Los Angeles. Your work was part of large retrospective exhibition, such as Splendid Entity, 25 Years of Object by Phyllis Green, and in, in 2011, and just recently, Dress Up, Constructing Other Self, 2014-2021 at El Camino College, Los Angeles. The first work we will be discussing is the one in the exhibition. It launched your career in 1975 in a surprising way. Boob Tree is now part of the Winnipeg Art Gallery collection. Boob Tree is famous because it was a catalog cover and poster image of Women as Viewer, an all women artist exhibition at the Winnipeg Art Gallery. Years later, you restored it for Winter Keep Us Warm in 2012 at Plug In in ICA, Winnipeg, Manitoba. This iconic work presents several tropes of great feminist work of that time period, such as the use of domestic textile an ironic and, and an ironic reclaiming of the female body. Can you elaborate on how you saw yourself then and what was your inspiration for the work? My inspiration for the work was surely the feminist wave that swept through North America in the 70s. Um, in early 1970, I moved to Vancouver. I did not identify as an artist. And, uh, but I was very engaged with making things. And I was a member of a number of consciousness raising groups and women's art groups. And I was also a crochet nut. It was um, the time when people were making things out of fiber. And I made this piece boob tree in my studio. I, I heard about this show, Women as Viewer. I took it outside to my yard uh, in West Bend. And there is the piece as I photographed it originally in 1974 in the yard against the shrub. I didn't know what a slide was at that time and probably nobody knows what they are anymore either. But I did go to the camera store nearby and I bought uh, some slide film. I made the shots that I thought the Winnipeg Art Gallery wanted or the committee for the show Women as Viewer wanted and I sent them in. They, uh, I would, much to my surprise, I was quite overwhelmed by the response. They chose it to be the uh, poster image. They it was a detail of it was the cover of the catalog. And I just didn't know how to react. I didn't feel I was an artist really. I was too shy to go to the opening. Um, and so I never did. I didn't see it from the time it went to Winnipeg till I left it in Vancouver when I moved to California. And I didn't see it again, again till 2012 when you mentioned that it was exhibited in Winnipeg. And I had to do a little bit, but not a lot of restoration. A great work and a great story. The second work we are looking at is titled Odalisk and is from the series Turkish Bat in 1994, which is taking its title and launching point from Jean-Auguste but Dominique Eng, painting of the same title. Your odalisk is clearly a feminist reclamation of art history done using fiber and ceramic skills. I understand it as taking an active part in the larger feminist art historical project of feminist art historians such as Marie Garard and Norma Brood and the Watershed uh, books. Can you situate your conception of this work for us? 
Yes, it was. There was another wave of feminism, feminist art, certainly, that was circulating in the 1990s. I had been doing large scale work and I was really interested in dealing with the concept of decoration, which was very important to Anger. This is probably the, uh, this Odalisque is probably the foremost presentation of his, the, the harem theme, which he exploited a lot uh, in the later part of his career. And I was interested in mixing up all kinds of symbolic male and female representation, that is modernist um, symbols of male and female representation, like hard and soft, uh, inside and outside. And so these pieces are smaller in scale, although this pillow is about 48 inches across, but they're loaded up to, to evoke all manner of female illusions. Um, and I really like that because one of my intentions was to challenge the lingering even in 28 years ago, but still lingering today assumption that decoration and ornament as feminine are enemies of high art. Thank so you. I enjoyed doing these pieces. Thank you. Our third choice is Fall 12, an autobiography considering Charles Ray, Fall 91. Its reference, Fall 91, by Charles Ray, was a scaled up female department store mannequin dressed in a red power suit as a career woman. Your interpretation performs radical modification. Can you describe and elaborate on these critical alterations? Yes, um, Charles Ray was a colleague of mine at UCLA and he was also, he had a- he yes, can, you change the, can you put the slide oh, on? Absolutely, excuse me. Okay, um, this, this slide, in this slide, I was trying to adopt the same uh, posture that Ray did in his uh, iconic slide of, him, of, of himself with the, with the uh, mannequin. What I did with mine, that mine is the same scale, it's eight feet tall, but there's a number of important differences. The first one is the surface that I, created was rusted in appearance, suggesting that the object was an artifact of a former time. The second is that, and most important, is that the mannequin head was replaced by a likeness of me. So in, in effect, it becomes a self-portrait and I am actually putting myself into Charles Ray's um, vision. And the third one, um, an important one to me is that the figure is not in a, a business suit, but it's draped with a, a sari-like swath of yellow silk that I acquired in India. I became very interested at the, around um, when the 2000s began, very interested in Hindu culture and spent, uh, made a number of trips to India and China and um, was interested in Hinduism and which is the dominant religion of that country. And so uh, the sari is a re reference to that. Daisy, thank you. Uh, finally, let us talk about Lion Lamb, a large sculpture that you completed in 2020, about 45 years after the boob tree. It was constructed on an armature of steel, resin and foam with a lavish fiber coat and features a removable wearable hood. Your latest body of work takes the form of costume or garments. How does Lion Lamb relate to this body of work? Um, here I am in this slide with wearing the hood separately from the body. I constructed this whole piece on an armature that was placed on a clothing rack, which you can see. And I was very interested and influenced by the Hindu proclamation that was made in the Bhagavad Gita, so it's thousands of years old, that we shed our bodies like we shed our clothes. And so me being interested, I really, my career long interest has been in constructing and projecting a multifarious identity. So this um, proclamation in the Bhagavad Gita was important to me. And so I wanted a character that was strong and inclusive. And I, 
did some research and the lion seemed to be a representation of strength or the representation of strength and power in many cultures. So I wanted it to be a lion and I, I was more interested in um, playing with form, less gender interest, less gender based form. And so I made this thing that Here's another image of it hanging. I wanted it to hang and I wanted people to be able to gather under it. It's finished on the inside and the outside. So I think of it as both an armature and an armament, like a la Trojan horse. That is, there I am sitting on the floor staring at it when it was hung in um, a gallery for this filming opportunity. But I imagined that other people would gather under it and we would share in the strength of the lion. And partly this was influenced also by the um, Chinese dragon figures that are worn by multiple people on New Year's and other big celebrations. That is, you can see the lion waving through the street with many, powered by many people. And so that's what I had in mind in this. So thank you, Phyllis. From boob tree to lion lamb, we invite everyone to visit your website for more information about your work. And we invite everybody that can come to the exhibition to uh, uh, visit your work too. Great, thank you, Marie, I enjoyed it.